Who was going to win Drag Race UK? It was Lawrence Cheney all along. Are you right, loves? It's me, Crudy Dench, and welcome to this final recap and review of Drag Race UK Series 2. It's Yorkshire Tea! There is loads to talk about this week, so let's dive straight in. As is tradition with Drag Race, the final contestants have to perform one of RuPaul's tracks, write their own little verse, and do a little dancey dancey. There's not much to say about the first 10 minutes of this episode, it's more of the, the same conversations that we've had previously, or people quietly writing. The girls have a two-on-one with Ru and Michelle. Not on the podcast though. Look, no mics in sight. Just a big bowl of antidepressants. But those antidepressants weren't needed, were they? Nobody did a big cry, to RuPaul's annoyance. Look at him, seething. We've got no footage of them recording lyrics, so it's straight on to the dance rehearsal. It's lovely to see some dancey boys, isn't it? Tace is like a little firecracker with her wig that makes her look like old Greg from the Mighty Boosh. Having a lovely time. Bimini is being all bendy like a snake. Oh, snake. Ellie's got this lockdown. And Lawrence is once again struggling a little bit. <laughs> Disappointed in me this week. The next day, Lawrence is tuckered out. He says he feels like a bin. And Ellie's pants belong in one. They all have a nice chat about their first impressions of each other and their journeys throughout the competition whilst getting ready for the main stage. Onto the main stage, Rue's got an amazing wig, but a bit of a meh dress for a finale? Really, this? <laughs> Disappointed in me this week. And is joined by Michelle, Graham and Alan. Michelle, Graham and Alan. The grand performance. Now, I've got to say, I am a fan of this song. I like it a lot more than last year's To The Moon, which is not a good RuPaul song. But if you watched it on the night, as I did, you will have noticed that the music was out of sync. It was really bad, and the vocals were really low as well. You could hardly understand any of it. However, they have now fixed this on BBC iPlayer, so if you watch it back, it is in sync. And in fairness to them, that's the only bit of shoddy editing that I've seen all series. They must be knackered, bless them. Going through the performances and the lyrics of each queen. Even with the fix, I couldn't understand Bimini's verse. I think she tried to put in too many words and impress us as her dance moves were impressing us. But neither matched the tempo. Which is a shame after she did so well in UK Hon. Ellie was fine, if again a little wordy. Lawrence did much better than expected. And Tace ate this up. Everything about Tace's performance was amazing. If badges were being given out now, she would have won this week's challenge. And then in homage to Dawn of the Dead, all of the girls came back from the grave, which I thought was a lovely moment. It's nice to see them all together again, not just backstage, but on stage as well. Lovely, heartwarming, gave me that sort of fuzzy feeling inside, you know. Final runway, final four, eleganza. Bimini, gorgeous. This is such a stunning and smart outfit. Makeup, hair on point, absolute top for me this week, even though she only bottoms. Ellie, the outfit was nice. It's a shame about the hoop skirt, it went a little lumpy bumpy. Lawrence, I like this look and I get it, but for me, this is more of what you would wear maybe coming into the competition. You know, ready to race, that kind of thing. And this is sort of an opportunity to wear something, you know, a little bit more elegant, eleganza. A little bit sparkly, a little bit woo. Woo! And with taste, I feel kind of the same. I think the last time we saw her in something big and grand was the Monster Mash runway. But also taste can do no wrong. I don't make the rules. Despite RuPaul's stilt skin pulling out all his tricks 
including old childhood photos and asking each one of them why they deserve the crown. He still can't make these girls cry. And so his curse remains. In the workroom, all the queens are there, looking good, feeling gorgeous. Except for Veronica, who understandably has left a very expensive dress for the finale of next year's Drag Race UK, and this year's decided to come as the Green Cross Man's sexy niece, Green Cross Girl. Ginny lets us know what she feeds on during the winter months. That's when the shit hangs on your bum hole. And Ahura lets us know what her and her grand got up to at the weekend. <laughs> the girls then all congregate on stage and shout out to Joe's dress here and headpiece. Oh, stunning. Definitely my favourite of the returning girls. And they all get a little parting gift. A QBE. Hello, cash for tat. Ellie gets knocked out at the final hurdle and then we have the finale lip sync and what a lip sync it is. Great song, this lip sync is immense. The moves, the comedy, the Cossack dancing in heels. This is truly a great finale lip sync. I was buzzing throughout. And then we get the crowning. Now, a lot has already been said about this win, and on paper, scores on the doors, Bimini was due the crown. Particularly given the journey they've had throughout the series, you could say that they were the most deserving winner. Lawrence Cheney taking the crown might not make sense to the majority of the audience, but it does make sense. Business sense. Choosing a winner of Drag Race UK is much more of a strategic business decision than just picking the favourite, picking whoever's won the most challenges, or even picking the winner of Drag Race US. In the US series, the winner gets $100,000, crown and scepter, makeup, and they largely just do what they want afterwards. They, you know, are set free, they may come back and do the finale the next season and do some bits in between for WoW Presents. Whereas with the UK series, the producers, WoW Presents, are tied into creating a minimum six part series for their own streaming platform, WoW Presents Plus. The greatest market share of WoW Presents Plus is in America. You know, you ask somebody over here in the UK if they've got WoW Presents Plus and they'll be like, huh? What? So when they are picking a winner of Drag Race UK, they are looking for the queen with the most charisma, uniqueness, nerve and talent on screen to try and ensure the success of the series that they produce with them. And Lawrence Cheney has that. Think back to the confessionals. Whose were more entertaining, Lawrence or Bimini's? It was Lawrence's. Lawrence has also played the game. He has got into arguments, he's provided drama for the cameras, whereas Bimini has taken largely a congenial back seat, which she has talked about and referenced in articles after the finale. In addition, before the show, Lawrence had also done a lot of work with BBC Scotland already, doing content for online and for broadcast. So again, is already more experienced. And finally, quite cynically, Lawrence, I think, is an easier sell to an American audience. <laughs> that funny lady talk funny. Overall, Lawrence is a safe pick to invest time and money into making a whole series with. But come on, let's focus on some positives here, okay? Lawrence is the first plus-sized winner of any Drag Race franchise, which is really important, and also does this without making the fact that they're plus-sized their whole personality, which I think is where some plus-sized queens have stumbled previously. Also, as Lawrence mentioned, this will help to put a spotlight on Scottish drag, which we know from looking back at the series is unappreciated. And let's be honest, London drag doesn't really need a leg up. Like, you can turn any corner and stumble on some gay nonsense. 
And although Bimini didn't take the crown, she has won people's hearts. And she's not doing bad for herself. She's got loads of followers, loads of press. She is the people's princess. Altogether, this has been a strong series. A great cast, some brilliant challenges, nice twists, building on the success of last year's series for sure. I don't think Drag Race UK has hit its peak, which is a good thing. I think there is a good few series yet to come. There is loads of potential for challenges, lots of formatting that can be played with, loads of amazing drag artists in the UK to choose from. There's definitely some longevity in it yet before it becomes stale like the US series has. And that's it, that's your lot, 10 episodes. Wow, thank you so much for coming on this journey with me and thank you so much for watching these videos. If you have enjoyed them, please share them with your friends. Watch them all over again, start to finish like the whole series, why don't you? You can subscribe if you want as well. I have no idea what's coming next, but that's for you to find out. Mm. And comment down below, what did you think of the series as a whole? A whole. To fill the void left by the series, you can follow me online. It's at Crudy Dench. That's Crudy with an I, like Judy, but far more Crudy. Did you get it? Mm. And I'll probably see you next series for another scolding round of Yorkshire Tea. Are we, are we done? I, j I can't watch any more of that shit. Oh, what a talentless bunch of twats.